I'm going to actually welcome in our our, our uh, presenters for uh, today and let them uh, get on with it. So, uh, Jetta and Paulina, please come to the stage. Cool. cool. Hello, everyone. And hey, Mike. Hey, So, how's it going, man? going great. You know, we found out backstage uh, that Mike actually makes his own guitars. I had no idea. It's the coolest thing in the world. So, They look amazing. yeah, yeah <laughs> it really is cool. So, yeah, so. Uh, it's great to be here. Thanks, everyone, for for coming out. You know, it's uh, it's really going to be a pleasure. Uh, Pauline and I are going to be going over a lot of uh, content during the presentation. Uh, so, you know, please, you know, uh, get your seats ready. You know, strap in. It's going to be a fast roller coaster, and hopefully, it's going to be a fun one too. All right. So let's just make sure we can see my screen. Everyone's good on seeing my screen, right? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Cool. So. <laughs> Welcome everyone to Mastering Gamification. So this, we're really excited about this. This is a joint webinar about gamification. And our goal is to illustrate how gamification can be used for your businesses and your applications, no matter what type of business or industry you're in, right? Many, there's a, a myth out there that gamification is part of the gaming industry. And while there's elements from the gaming industry, it's for every single industry. Right. Uh, our focus is really engagement and effectiveness usage of your applications. Uh, as you can see from the presentation, we tried to spice things up a little bit. There's going to be you know, some videos. There's going to be some GIFs. You know, we're going to try to get really live. We're going to have a lot of examples here. So, uh, yes, yeah, so that's it. Uh, anything I missed on the intro, Paulina? Nope, that was perfect. All right. Awesome. So let's get started. Uh, so my name is Jedediah Weller. I go by Jedi. May the force be with you. Uh, I'm the founder of OpenForge and our parent company. I'm a software engineer by trade. I've been coding ever since I was eight years old with this old video game uh, called Tribes 2. And I, uh, I, you know, I love software. I love mobile apps, um, you know, and I love the technology side. So, you know, I speak a lot about the hybrid and the intersection between business and technology. And uh, yeah, that's me. I'm happy to be here. Uh, Paulina, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you so much. Glad to be here. Great to see everybody in chat. My name is Paulina. I am the lead software engineer over here at OpenForge. I'm also an Ionic developer expert. I live, breathe, and love Ionic. I've been using Ionic since Ionic 1 beta, so a long time ago. Um, been using all the hybrid mobile tooling as well from PhoneGap, Cordova, Capacitor, you name it. I've probably touched it at least once. Um, yeah, I've been in part of the mobile app space for a good nine years now, and I've touched upon almost every industry. So as much as like I love leading a development team, I've built multiple apps from start to finish. I've been in the design team. I've been with the QA team. I've been with the marketing team even. So I know all aspects of creating mobile apps from start to finish. Yeah, and uh, and actually, Paulina, you you undersell yourself. I think you've probably built like fifty, sixty different apps alone. You know, uh, at this point. So, um, uh, yeah, you, Paulina has some great experience. Sorry, go ahead. Oh no, it's all fun. <laughs> And, uh, you know, we couldn't be here today without our team. So we just want to give a shout out to the OpenForge team. Uh, OpenForge specializes in mobile applications and they're a great uh, group of guys and gals. So, yeah. So thank you to everyone on the team. All right. So let's talk about the agenda. So here's how we're going to operate things. We're going to start with intro to gamification. You know, what it is, what it's not. Uh, we're going to give some examples of each. We're going to talk about the psychology behind gamification and why it works, right? Why it actually helps engagement. Uh, and then we're going to talk about strategies for gamification. Paulina, well, do you want to talk about this one? Yeah, we're going to go over some principles for gamifications, look at some examples that Jedi and myself show. We're also going to talk about the technology aspect and how to get started and our personal recommendations for gamification in general. Yep. Awesome. And we're going to go over a ton of examples. We only listed a couple here because there wasn't enough uh, you know, space on the on the slide. And then we'll also be posting some of these resources after the webinar. We'll be emailing everyone uh, to give you guys access to some of these resources that we showed today and also some additional resources as well. So very excited about that. All right. So uh, we have a poll. And let's see who's going to launch this poll. All right. Here it is. 
All right. So uh, we have a poll. Uh, the poll question for everyone is what type of gamification techniques do you currently use in your product or service? And we listed uh, most of the most common ones out there. Some of you might not have any, in which case there's an option at the very uh, bottom. Right. And then some of you might have some. Right. And I think I can actually pull the poll over here now. While you guys are are doing the poll, I also have a, a legal disclaimer. Okay, this is a, this is the only boring part of the presentation. I promise. Uh, I just have to read this out loud. That's what the legal team said. So I'm going to power read through it. <clears throat> Pauline and I know we we practice this. So the legal disclaimer. This webinar and its associated materials are intended for educational purposes only. The apps discussed during the session are the pro are properties of the respective owners. We do not claim ownership of any of the materials presented that is associated with these apps. All trademarks, logos, and brand names shown or mentioned are the property of the respective owners. For our use of any app-related materials, such as screenshots or featured descriptions, falls under fair use for educational commentary and analytical purposes. This webinar is not endorsed by, directly affiliated with, or maintained, or authorized, or sponsored by any of the companies or developers of the apps discussed. All product and company names are registered trademarks to the original owners. The views and opinions expressed in this webinar are those of the presenters and do not necessarily reflect the official uh, policy or position of any of the app developers or companies mentioned. Woo! Nice going. <laughs> I saw in the chat, uh, Beyond said, faster, faster. I don't think I can go any faster. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So, uh, that's our legal disclaimer. Uh, again, just because we're going to be showing so many different examples, right? Many of which are apps that we do not ourselves own. Uh, we have to give this disclaimer out, but it's going to benefit you guys because this is an educational uh, webinar. And please ask questions along the way. Uh, you know, please you know comment in the chat. You know, we'd love to hear with you uh, from you. Great thing about joining these webinars live is that we actually get to engage a little bit. So, uh, very excited about it. All right, so let's see uh, what the result was for the poll. Let's see. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. So let's see. Twenty-five percent of the people use poll uh, points. Okay. Nineteen percent use levels. Sixteen badges. Uh, Twenty percent leaderboards. Okay. We got challenges, progress bars. Oh wow. Okay. So yeah, progress bars and points are both at like twenty-five percent and up. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm surprised so many people have avatars already built in. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm very interested in the storytelling folks. Okay, yeah. And then we have fifty, uh, almost 50% of everyone said we don't currently use any of these. So hopefully we can change that at the end of this uh, webinar, this presentation. Yeah, thank you, everybody, for participating. Yeah, thank you. All right, so let's talk about the introduction to gamification. So actually, before I show that slide, I'm going to tell a little bit of a story here. So, you know, it's important for us to understand the breadth of gamification. We saw 50% of the audience doesn't use any form of gamification in their apps as it is, okay? And we wanna change that. Now, that's not uncommon, right? You know, there's many companies that's who, you know, think gamification is all about games, right? And it's not, I, they are incorrect. I'm gonna say that right now, right? Uh, it is predominant in many different industries, all types. Just yesterday, actually, as I was prepping for this uh, presentation, I went to grab lunch and I called Lyft. And when I called my Lyft, you know, at the end of it, when they dropped me off, I got a push notification on my phone. OK, and this was my uh, push notification. Right. And this is, by the way, this is my wife. She's lovely. Her name is Madonna. Uh, that's my background. But you can see the notification says, uh, hey, Jedediah, thanks for tipping. You made your driver's day by tipping on your last ride. Tap to see how close you are to your next uh, tipper badge. And, you know, I don't typically look at my phone on my push notifications. I get too many. But this time, since I was doing a webinar on gamification, I was like, all right, let me click on it. Let me see. And then I got in and I saw I'm a top tipper. Did you know that? <laughs> I felt so good, right? I had 80 plus tips uh, on my, uh, I think this was the company account. And, you know, and then I, I, I clicked in to view all of my badges and I saw I've gotten 1000 miles. I've done 50 five star ratings. You know, it was just really cool. It was a really cool experience, right? And you don't really think that a ride sharing app would be an app that has gamified principles or practices in it, but it is, okay? And it's not just ride sharing. You know, we're going to talk about financial applications, you know, such as Mint, uh, Robinhood, uh, Stash, Acorn, right? You know, there's all these different applications in the financial sector that use gamification quite successfully. You know, Robinhood is a very good example. And we're going to dive into that one uh, a little bit. 
We have productivity apps, uh, whether it be like a Habitica, a Habits Garden, a Duolingo, you know, et cetera. These are, are really uh, good productivity apps all across different industries, uh, all different types. And we also have healthcare. You know, we have um, a Cigna, right? My Cigna, Sleep Town, my favorite one. And it's not, I don't know if you consider it healthcare, it's more like fitness, but just because it's such a cool app is Zombies Run, where essentially it's a uh, running app. And there's a ton of, of you know, jogging trackers out there, right? You know, like there's Strava, um, there's, a, I forget all the different ones, but you know, like there's an Apple fitness one, but this one's really cool because what they do is you listen and they essentially will scream at you and say, there's a zombie coming, you know, it's coming from over here, run, run faster, right? And it actually works. People enjoy it. And if you're like me and you don't enjoy running, well, this might be a fun way to, uh, to actually, you know, engage with it a little bit further. So <laughs> have you ever used this one, Paulina? No, but I love the concept. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool, right? So, you know, finance, healthcare, productivity, uh, their manufacturing, really, it doesn't matter what your industry is, you know, because gamification uses human principles and human motivators at its core. Okay. And so you'll find successful case studies uh, in every industry of how they use gamification. So let's talk about what it is. Right? So first and foremost, gamification is a motivational strategy. And this is the most important thing to remember and to keep in mind. Right? We're taking game design elements and concepts, but not games, just the concepts from them. Right? And we're applying them to non-game contexts such as education or motive or motivation of you getting a, a user to purchase something. Right? So this is important. This is what gamification is all about. It's a motivational strategy. We want to influence how our users are actually uh, you know, using our applications. Okay. It's also an engagement tool. So we can influence different experiences and how users are engaging with your tool uh, by using some of these practices. Right. Uh, and, you know, it's again, it's a behavior influence. Right? So this means that, you know, if you have an application and let's say, I don't know, let's say you have Amazon. I'm just going to use Amazon. Everyone knows it. Right. Well, if you're seeing on Amazon that that we own Amazon, if we owned Amazon and we were seeing that people, uh, you know, were not purchasing from a certain category. We could use gamification tactics to actually influence their behavior. Maybe we have them you know, go into a certain section of the website. Maybe we reward them from coming back to develop a habit, et cetera. Same thing applies to every single industry. Right? And there's some examples of how this works, right? The Sweat uh, Fitness app is a good one, right? Because this one, uh, they have a really good badging system and reward system, right? And you can see that they actually have you share your achievements uh, live, right? So basically what they're doing here is they're saying, hey, not only are you going to work out, right? Because everyone wants to work out, not everyone actually goes through with it. So what they do is they gamify the system. That way people will actually follow through and they'll talk about it and, you know, they'll reward themselves and they'll share it with others. I know you talked about a personal story before. I have a personal story with this app, actually. Oh, what's yours? So um, I actually followed the creator for a good decade now who made this application. Um, and she actually didn't start out as a mobile application. She started out as digital uh, workout books on Instagram. And she grew her following to 2 million users. And essentially, these workout plans were like a 30-day 30, 30 challenge or a 90-day challenge. And she harbored, she got a community together of like over a million women just posting about their weekly status, weekly changes, daily habits. And she applied, she took that community, applied those principles and created this app and has been expanding features on here ever since. So wow. yeah, gamification on Instagram, just through social media. Yeah. Yeah. And we actually, we had a client back in the day who, uh, who had a similar experience actually. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really, really effective. Right. And there's, there's other examples too. Right. And, you know, that was in the, in the actual, um, what you call it, like workout space. Right. But also in physical therapy, you can also apply gamification principles. There's this company called Re Rehab. Sorry. So, you know, it's like pre rehab where you can actually annotate and say what body parts or what injuries you have. And based upon that, they'll give you a customized uh, workout plan 
and they'll go through and they use a bunch of gamification techniques really well in here, you know, whether, whether it be uh, reminders, whether it be customization, you know, whether it be challenges, you know, and they'll use these and they'll, they'll also show a number of other members who are using it. That way you don't feel like you're alone in this. That way, you know, you know, it's part of a community. Um, so yeah, really good examples here. And I saw in the chat uh, from Ken that he was saying that I have a fair number of apps that include uh, gamification. The one that was probably the most successful is my toothbrush, my toothbrushes app. It's 100% solidified my flossing behavior. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, reward, the... rewarding daily habits. Is something yep. mundane is brushing your teeth and flossing. Yep, absolutely. All right, awesome. So uh, some of the other things that gamification is, is it's data-driven. Right, which means that you know we take user data and feedback, and we can we can have uh, personalized decisions based on it or personalized outcomes. Right, and it's also a means to achieve objectives. So whenever you're thinking about how to gamify your application, especially if you have to you know put this up the chain, convince you know your executives or convince your bosses, um, the the biggest thing to do is to focus on the actual company goals. Right, you know what are your goals? That you want to accomplish it doesn't matter what they are just what are your company goals whether it's increased usage you know increased sales maybe uh you know increasing your stats on the app store like your daily active users or your daily downloads it could be any of those and then from there you can actually map it to all right how can we influence that behavior from our customers and what type of gamification techniques can we use okay uh this application in particular it's called the done app and uh, what they essentially do is they allow you to set a bunch of different metrics for like what types of things that you want to gamify and what type of things you want to get rem reminded about. Um, and the way they do that is they let you customize everything about the reminders. So you can say, you know, uh, what type of reminder it is, how often are you going to do this, you know, what time of day, that kind of thing. Right. And so they really take the data customization piece and they make it really personal. Because think about it. If you're going through and you're trying to convince yourself to follow your New Year's gym resolution, would you be more willing to do something that someone else tells you to do? Or would you be will more willing to do something that you yourself said, hey, you have to do this. No excuses. Right. This is what you want to do. And then it reminds you. Right. So you're kind of co-creating that, that workout program. All right, so that's what gamification is. Now, talking about what gamification is not, it is not just for entertainment. We mentioned before, it is not just a game, right? Gamification does not mean there's any game at all in your application, right? It's taking those principles that are from games and what makes games so addictive and what makes games so enjoyable, taking those principles and applying them to non-game contexts. Uh, also, it's not a quick fix. So this is a, an important uh, piece because well, we've seen a lot of companies, they'll, you know, they'll try to, you know, quickly implement some uh, gamification practice and they'll say, okay, let's just put a leaderboard in there, right? It doesn't work like that. Right? You know, th while that is a component of gamification, it takes time and it takes thought to actually go through and understand, you know, what are your customers' motivations? How are you going to reward them? How are you going to gamify it? You know, what are what are the different interaction points that you're going to go through? So, you know, just setting realistic expectations, you know, for you. This is not a thing you just do in two weeks, right? It's a thing that's going to take, you know, a couple of weeks or a couple of months to have a great strategy for. And just like anything else, you should definitely consider at doing iterations for it, you know, have an MVP of your gamified, you know, cycle, and then iterate, you know, like go to market, get feedback, iterate, 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 right? Always a good approach. All right, cool. So let's talk about the psychology now, right? And so why, understanding why gamification increases engagement. In order to understand how gamification works and why it's so effective, you have to understand the core drives of us as like human beings, right? What makes us tick? What makes Paulina tick? What makes Jedi tick? What makes Mike tick, right? Uh, it's very, very important to understand the core drive. Psychology is a big thing, you know, in business and in sales and in any application, right? So there's a ton of core drives. Um, here's a couple examples of, you know, some of the, the most important ones. So the meaning and calling, you know, this is going to be the desire to feel that our actions have a purpose. So imagine social impact, 
related applications or social impact related businesses. That's you know where we have meaning and calling would come in. Accomplishment. So this is going to be when you uh, overcome a challenge, right? You know, personal challenge. A lot of fitness applications do this extremely well, but other types of apps do it as all, also. Uh, Empowerment of creativity and feedback, right? So desire to have control, influence, uh, and the ability to experiment and make choices, right? So this is going to come, you know, if you look at uh, Roblox, you know, Roblox is a game, but I think it's a good example, right? They basically opened up this marketplace and they said, hey, not only can people, you know, play these different types of games, maybe they're educational, maybe they're XYZ, but they can also create themselves. And when you have people creating in, in your application, you're going to have so such greater level of stickiness because now they're invested, right? Whenever we invest in something, you know, we're going to keep using it. Okay? And that actually ties in ownership and possession too. If you have the ability to have your users or your customers actually create something on your app, then you should definitely uh, you know, take advantage of that. And then there's a demotivational ones, you know, dubbed kind of black hat uh, drives, uh, but they don't necessarily need to be, you know, considered like a bad thing. And they're not always a bad thing. Um, social influence, uh, scarcity and impatience, loss and avoidance, unpredictability. You know, these are all demotivational drives. Uh, to give you an example on the, like the demotivational side, Duolingo uh, has a push notification where essentially if if you don't respond to any of the other notifications over seven days, they send you one final push that says, well, looks like it's not working. So uh, we're going to stop messaging you. And they, they have up. so many people come back from that. Oh, yeah. They break up with you. Yeah, they break up with you. And, and that encourages people to come back. <laughs> so, again, understanding emotions are very important. All right. And so if we take a look at a couple examples here, right? And we look at Robinhood. So Robinhood, I'm sure many of you know it. It's an investment app, right? And they do a couple of uh, different things in the gamification space that are uh, quite effective. Uh, I did a little video here of me going through and uh, actually, you know, uh, uh, doing some investing through the platform here. So I was playing with it a little bit, you know, for the presentation. And so the first thing it had me do was it had me learn about different types of uh of stocks of mutual funds of you know like basically everything in the in the industry i was recording one uh at random here i think this one was for avalanche yeah this was for avalanche right and so after you know after it asked me to actually learn about it you know which if you think about your existing applications i'm sure you have a tutorial in your existing apps you know, okay hey you know do you know this is how you do this this is how you do that this is how you do this right then it actually asked me to go through and take a quiz for it all right. So I went through, I took a quiz. I think the first time I failed the quiz because I wasn't really paying attention the first time. But then when I failed, oh, let's try that again. I had to go back. I had to actually do it again. Right. And it was effective because the next, the second time I went through and I did this, I actually paid attention and I was like, okay, I need to answer these right. So let me learn about this. And at the end of this, right, at the end of this uh, information, this quiz, they then gave me a reward. So congrats, you earned $1 of, of AVAX. And boom, then at the at the next one, I think it's on the next slide here, they actually give me a, a physical reward. So let's, let me see if I can go to that one. Oh, I got, yeah, well, I don't think I had included that in the video. So they gave me an award. They gave me a dollar, right? Uh, and that was like a, a cool experience for me. Then there's other parts of, of Robinhood that also are equally as effective, right? So we notice here that on other parts, when I was actually going through and I wanted to, you know, do an investment, I never used the app before. I was like, okay, let me go through. Well, it took me through a question and answer. Uh, important note about these, um, about like the initial information was I had filled in all my profile information and it said, okay, based upon this information, we're going to make some suggestions for you. Okay. And so first they educate me a bit. You'll notice that each of these, uh, each of these like things that come up, it's not just a static image. You know, they have SVGs, they have animations, micro animations here, okay? And it makes it more enjoyable. Right? And this is something that I know a lot of applications, they struggle with, especially if you have a team of backend engineers, right? You know, the backend, backend engineers and front-end engineers are typically gonna be two different uh, sets, right? So this could be harder for you to do, but it is very important, especially from the user experience standpoint. And then I got into it and I said, okay, I'm gonna invest a hundred dollars here. It, Asked me which ones I want to actually invest in. I had to sign off a disclaimer. And then I swipe, boom, sending order, order received, 
and my order is placed. And the most important piece, boom, congratulations on becoming an investor, right? Well, I feel good now. Do you guys feel good? You just ha you just became an investor with me. So that was, that was so seamless, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, was it? Oh, thanks. I yeah. Oh, no, no I, meant, I meant the app. No. Oh, no. I mean, you're seamless, too. Oh, I'm so sad now. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. But yeah, so so you're you're right, Pauline. Like it was, it's so seamless. Like this entire interaction that Robinhood did from when they present information to you know, hey, we're almost here, right? They're giving us like a status uh, a status update to when I actually make the investment, right? It's a it's a very very quick experience. And if you if you uh, watch the Netflix series about Robinhood or you know what or you uh, you know pay attention to what was happening during COVID. Right. One of the reasons they had such good adoption is because they made it so easy for anyone to just invest. Right. It wasn't like going on to another application and, you know, having to go through all this, you know, spreadsheet related data and trying to figure out, okay, can I do this? You just pull up your app and just go boom, swipe. Okay. Yeah. The Netflix film is uh, Dumb Money. Yeah. And a great app, a great, uh, great film, by the way. So, that is Robin Hood. All right. Did I miss anything on Robin Hood, Paulina? No, all set. All right, cool. And then uh, the last kind of in-depth example here uh, that we want to go through is Duolingo. So Duolingo, they do a really, really good job also gamification. And their magic um, really comes on the streak side. All right. So if you don't know what a streak is, it's essentially this concept that, you know, you start on a certain day and... It's Monday, or like, let's say they start on Saturday in this example, right? And they say, hey, practicing daily grows your streaks, but skipping a day resets it, okay? And you go through, if you actually accomplish it on day one, you get a check mark, you get some rewards that pop up. We don't have them filmed here. Uh, same thing on Sunday, same thing on Monday, you know, et cetera. And what this does, if we go back to our motivations, is, you know, it triggers a couple things, right? One, it triggers... The, the sense of accomplishment. Hey, we are accomplishing this thing. And I feel good about that, right? It also uh, takes a, it also takes this uh, perspective of, well, I haven't finished my task yet. And because I haven't finished my task yet, like, which is, you know, hitting perfect streaks, there's always another day to go. You know, I'm, I, I'm forced to feel a certain way. I'm forced to feel, well, you know what? I have to do this tomorrow. And then the third principle that it hits is that fear of loss, right? That demotivational one. Well, if you're 365 days into a streak, it's going to be a big deal if you lose that, right? It's going to be a really big deal. Yeah, I saw, I saw Logan from the chat just said that he had a, a Duolingo had him locked in for a solid year to learn Japanese. Wow. Right? Yeah, good job. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and Logan, you're actually you're not the only one, right? I I tried for a year. I think I, I think I got sick, and so I slept through a day at like 165, and I felt devastated. Uh, Madonna, my wife, she she could tell you how devastated I felt. Like I was in tears. Paulina, Jedi, we have a 574 day streak in the chat. Wow, <laughs> oh, good job, it man. Worked. <laughs> yeah, so that's you know it's insane, right? Um, but it's it's effective you know th these principles are effective now another interesting fact about duolingo is they have more people learning a foreign language in duolingo than every school like high school and college in the world i think all right they you know they're they're affecting the entire world and their whole premise is giving you know education for everyone and they started with language and then, oh, and then this is the example that I talked about a little bit earlier, right? So we have a couple of push notifications from Duolingo. This is the person who did not uh, follow through it in the 575 days or 74 days, right? And you can see it starts here. So, hey, it's Lily, take your lesson today or don't. It's all the same to me, but don't tell Duo I said that. You know, they made it fun, right? Then they get another message, then they get another message. And then finally, when they don't receive any others, uh, any like um, user interaction, these reminders don't seem to be working. We'll stop sending them for now. And this is that trick right there. That's what got them to actually get these users back. As they say, well, I don't want to lose this. I don't want to you know, not get a notification, even though you find them annoying when you do get them. 
So we're not gonna, I'm not gonna cover all these right here, uh, the psychology uh, effects, but we will again, post the slides and we'll post some additional resources as well with even more uh, effects here. But, you know, again, we have the phenomenon of, you know, of having an, un an interrupted task or an uncompleted task is going to be more meaningful to you. Loss of versions, social proof, sunk cost policy, right? All of these are the psychology principles, you know, that kind of help uh, map with the motivations and drive gamification, gamification techniques. And that is all I have. So Paulina, I think you're up, right? Oh yeah, let's let's get started. So I'm gonna be going over strategies for gamification. So at a high level, I'll be starting with going over some principles and key items to keep in mind for gamification. Then I'll go into the technical aspect. I wanna make gamification, I wanna implement gamification. How do I do that? And then finally, our recommendations on getting started. So let's do it. So, before we even get to the technical, like I mentioned, which by the way, dev favorite thing to talk about, let's take a look at these first two points. And this is what I would consider the most important to sit down when planning gamification before any thought about the mechanic itself, how the user's going to interact with, et cetera. So um, define and know your objectives. So three common ones we've seen, engagement, behavioral, educational, engagement, something like increasing time spent on the app, behavioral, encouraging the user to complete a specific action, and educational, enhanced learning experiences th throughout the application. Jedi talked about this previously, about the objective being data-driven. So really, that's where you're going to find your answer. Um, and you may have more than one objective, but when you're first starting out, try to pick one just to align with that first. And we actually saw a couple already that have multiple objectives. So Robinhood, as an example, has behavioral for encouraging users like Jedi to complete um, a set task or flow in order to have an end result of something, and educational with an interactive experience through these trainings, not only to give the user a sense of empowerment through learning, but encouraging them to make further and now educated decisions on the mobile app. And Duolingo, Duolingo is our favorite. It takes advantage of all three of these. So engagement with encouraging users through the streaks with these daily visits, behavioral as completing a set of educational materials and progressing through these challenges that are set by them. And education, literally one of their core principles of the organization as a whole, having every intention that they do around gamification revolve around learning. And defining your objective should be a group effort among your organization. What overall do you want gamification to help accomplish? And once you've established your objective, your decisions and direction on how to implement it should revolve around that objective. At the end of the day, this is what your user will benefit from either doing or understanding from your mobile app experience. And the other big point is understanding your audience. So demographics is important, what plays into motivates your audience as examples. So working with your design and marketing team to create a user persona as an example, if you already don't have one, if you do, this will be so much easier. Um, and include as much information as possible on demographics. So I know um, we're talking about gamification. I'm gonna bring up a game. Um, so there's Pokemon Go as an example. Um, they rolled out a update to their gamification strategy where uh, users were required to go to physical locations in order to receive an event exclusive item as an example. But, you know, folks in the Midwest, they can't go to New York City over the weekend on a whim. So there's no way of getting that reward. And there was a lot of backlash from that. So they ended up changing that game strategy entirely and opting in for, I believe, remote um, remote participation. So as much information on your user persona as possible when making these decisions. And motivations as well. So like as an example, motivations for older adults may differ from younger adults. Like in the fitness space, older adults may focus more on like wellness, maintenance, overall health versus younger adults may be focusing on like growth, more of a personalized fitness journey, advancements, challenges, et cetera. So really this is the core of 
start getting started with your gamification mechanism. Yeah, and actually, that's a good point uh, on motivation and the audiences. I just remembered that, um, was it Candy Crush? I think they had a whole case study that was released about how they have a huge audience of people who are actually, you know, elderly in a nursing home yes. now, or, you know, are getting like a social or a, a social security check. And so they would see different behaviors and different uh, you know patterns suspending based upon the time of month it was. Right. And so, you know, again, that's just like Pauline said, understanding your audience. Yeah. And, to, and taking advantage of what they do on habit, what motivates them, what are their habits, et cetera. If you want to go to the next. So let's talk about, yes, it is a healthy, Pokemon Go is a healthy addiction. Um, <laughs> so let's talk about some common mechanics. We've already talked about and looked at some examples, but at a high level, um, points, levels, badges, achievements, leaderboards, tasks, challenges, and quests, and feedback. Fun stuff. Um, so you can choose any one of these or more mechanisms. You don't necessarily have to follow them strictly, but they're an excellent way to get started gathering ideas on how to kind of facilitate this. And when I say like challenges, tasks, and quests, I know they sound super gamified. Um, if that even is a word, I don't know. But you don't have to call your mechanism in-app at the end of the day a quest. It can be something branded or something unique um, to your company uh, that's still recognizable to the user. But we're just using these contextually to you know, hone in the principles of what these things are. And I would say out of all of these common mechanisms, feedback is the easiest and probably the most universal to start with positive reinforcement through actions or uh, virtual cues, I would totally recommend starting with this before even looking at any others. Um, next one. Another thing is social elements. So social elements are a great way to facilitate more engagement throughout your mobile app. Users will be motivated to sign in, complete tasks, engage with each other as a community. So social sharing, share, your updates in the application, talk with friends, chat with friends, challenge friends or compete, community boards, similar, straightforward like that. Now, I do wanna mention, even though you may have an application that doesn't have a social element or so um, engagement with uh, user to user engagement, it's important to keep in mind when creating these experiences, the potential of social sharing outside the application. And what I mean by that is um, earlier we talked about Kayla as an example. Um, she has and is maintaining a community outside her sweat application on Instagram, even though she has a mobile app with a social community in there. And there are further examples of this in like the fitness space is an example. I've seen post, I've seen folks post online uh, screenshots of their fitness app, like My Fitness Pal, Fitbit, Peloton of their personal fitness journey and progress. Like I have a screenshot from Reddit of, a, of um, someone sharing um, their weight loss goal. And um, it's generally these screenshots are like a large, uh, doesn't really have any identifying information, but some form of visual that, you know, makes the user feel good. The large number at the top, feeling gratifying colors, a lot of the times I've seen folks share the weight loss graph as an example. So how long they've been on it, how much weight that they have lost over a time period. And that's important because users may not want to directly interact with each other in the application for privacy reasons, or they just don't want to. But creating visuals inside your application that I like to call screenshot worthy will encourage users to post and talk about using your application while they're feeling motivated. You may not have a community or social engagement directly in your application, but you need to be aware of other social spaces that exist that they may talk about it in reference to your mobile app. Yeah, I, I know a lot of uh, a, a lot of us, you know, because like we're all you know developers or predominantly developers in this webinar. You know, we often fo focus on the functionality, mm -hmm. uh, but. You know, I can tell you that a lot of the success is going to be, you know, 50% functionality and 50% the user experience, you know, the user experience, you know, just like Paulina said, it it matters so much for so many different reasons. That's why we have a whole design team at OpenForge, you know, and it's very, you know, very important that we do so. 
Yeah. And there's like psychology behind like user experience, as we all know. Um, like even as an example, that large on that screenshot, the biggest text element is the weight. Um, and in the finance industry, we've seen in Robinhood as an example, the money and how much money you're inputting, how much you're saving, that's the largest text. There's a reason for that. So Yeah, and like and like and it ticks up and ticks down live. So and like I've I've caught myself since yesterday. I've caught myself looking at it like hmm. Yeah, so that's it at the end of the day. All right, accessibility and ex inclusivity. So looking at this and going back to our objectives and demographic points, we need to keep in mind that users will learn and adapt at different paces. So for example, in like a wellness or fitness app, there are flexible constraints in order to accommodate users to track and set goals for themselves. So the app and functionality needs to be responsive for someone who run, wants to run a 5K versus someone who wants to run their first mile. And likewise, setting a pace for new users or returning users is an example. So returning users shouldn't have to go all the way back to the very beginning. Um, if they come back after a long time, yeah, maybe they'll go through a little mini tutorial. Duolingo, I think, does this really well. But also, you shouldn't be going through challenges as quickly as you used to if you're a veteran or returning user. And as much as we've been showing very fun and visual ex user experiences and have been talking about them, it's important to keep in mind that you'll want to work with your design team to ensure accessible designs. And what I mean is examples like if you have animations, make sure that it's something presentable in a static state. Make sure if you have something that's very visual heavy, that there's always companion accent, action text. Do not have visualization solo on a screen. You have to have action text associated to it. Make sure graphics and visualizations adhere to font size, color contrast, accessibility standards on both web and mobile. And if you have something that's like visually dynamic, I've seen a couple apps where let's say the background changes color based on the time of day. Um, include other elements that kind of key into that. Just don't change the color without any, you know, vis other visual indicator, it being text or like another visual. So like the background change example, based on the time of day, perhaps make sure to add a greeting that says good morning, good afternoon, good night. Uh, not good night, good evening to kind of coincide. Well, it could be good night too. Why not? <laughs> All right. As Jedi mentioned before, gamification is not an overnight task and is something that takes pretty significant amount of time to hash out a full strategic implementation. So even if you have a full strategy locked down, you're going to want to keep going through and testing strategies. Always be fresh as demographics may change outside, uh, demographics may change, outside variables may come into play, test new content. So iteration is very important. Um, likewise, going through the full prototype, user feedback, iterate, et cetera. Um, and yes, I did bold the word lesson, especially when it comes to iterate. So there may be, you may find yourself in a situation where you may have over gamified a feature or like a mechanic in your application. And yes, that can be a thing. Um, I'll give an example of like uh, over gamification, which is like push notifications. Um, how many of you have chat in chat have uninstalled an application because of push notifications, either being too annoying or you go in and silence them, you ignore them. I'm sure there's a handful of folks out there, but yes, there is an art to communicating with your user and yes, exactly. <laughs> Immediately uninstall. So yes, you can overwhelm a user if you give them too many tasks, if you're not pacing the right way and they just become disinterested. So being able to iterate and make those refinements um, is key. And Duolingo didn't come up with their push not notification strategy overnight. That took a long time for them. And make sure you're working with your marketing uh, da data analyst design team to understand analytics and trends from how gamification elements are being used in your user base. So from there, you can make informed decisions on what you would like to iterate on, refine, or try out something new. 
like even when I was um, writing notes for this presentation, I thought like there are time sensitive events or real life events that correspond to like an industry. Maybe you'll want to try out a gamification tactic along with current events that could seem fresh and relevant. So ideas are endless. <laughs> so now that I got all that out of the way, I talked a lot about setup and things to keep in mind when creating gamification in your platforms. What about implementation? Um, generally, the following is what's involved. A lot of it is self-explanatory, but I do want to go over it. So the work involved is some form of front-end user-facing, um, a back-end that contains game, game logic, potential integration to other systems and a database. So user data retains progression, activity log, et cetera. And I bold front end here because that is the piece that I believe is the most important about gamification, the user experience. You can invest all the time that you want into insane amount of game logic in your backend, custom and unique, unique events, tracked experiences, but it will not be effective to your end user if the customer facing side is not engaging and pleasing. So some considerations when you're looking to integrate gamification, scalability, make sure the direction you're going in can accommodate a growing user base as an example, security, ensure your user data is protected if it isn't already, I'm sure it is. But if you're gamifying personal or sensitive information, you're going to want to make sure it's secure. And cross-platform. Of course, we're talking about mobile apps, but mobile apps can also be desktop apps, tablet apps. There needs to be consideration there. Mobile, mobile first is always the best strategy, but there needs to be a review across the board on all platforms on how this experience will be. And finally, getting started. So our recommendation, we've been talking a lot about user experience is start small. So when I say start small, I mean, let's take a look at what current mobile app you have and see what we can do to apply some of these gamification features or even be inspired by gamifications. And when I say inspired, I mean, maybe something visually pleasing like micro interactions, interactive elements, animation. So those smooth native transitions that Ionic puts in, um, visual effects, scrolling, sound elements, uh, dynamic theming. And by starting small, you're able to iterate and find the best strategy for your audience. Prove that your objective can be accomplished in regards to what you would like your users to do and achieve. You're able to respond quicker, um, really focus on that user experience. Because at the end of the day, gamification is most appealing for the end user and is a pleasant experience. So I just thought for, for this presentation, I wanted to do something fun. So I took the a screen in the IANA conference app and I'm like, let's see if I can jazz this up and, you know, use some gamification influence. So in my mind, I was like, I have an objective of, I want more folks to network at this OpenForge and Friends Con. <laughs> so try to incentivize people to connect and network. So I just enhanced the UI a little bit. I made it purple, added a little couple animations in there, transitions. Um, and I have a pop-up uh, coming up where it's a little SVG congratulating, hey, you've made five connections, go see the event host for a prize. Um, so just something small. I, I time box myself. I did this in like an hour, maybe two hours max of just making these small changes. And yeah, you don't need to fit in a specific model with gamification. You can be inspired by the principles like I was. And at the end of the day, we all have the same goal, which is to have users want to use our app. So why not take an hour to make it more exciting? Yeah, and and Paulina, uh, again, I think you sell yourself short here. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, many of us, myself included, it would take us much longer than two hours to accomplish what Paulina did in that time. Um, but you know, again, Paulina specializes in front end development uh, and also in the design side as well. And you've had a ton of experience. So. Oh um, yeah. 
I probably would have cut it down to 30 minutes, maybe if I had a prototype beforehand. Um, I'm going to need oh, to. Speed... Now you're just... Oh, I want to speed run this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And I think we have a poll, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what's what's this poll? Here we go. Yeah. So we talked a lot about gamification as the presentation. So we're curious, um, what type of support or resistance to gamification do you see within your organization? And we asked this as we know, um, gamification can be intimidating. A lot of like higher ups may think, why are we spending all this time um, adding this mechanism to our app? What's the payoff? So we're we're curious to know know the support behind it. And if there's like hesitation towards gamification, how how can we better answer this to help you folks out to get gamifications in your gamification in your apps? <laughs> I just saw the funniest comment in the chat, Paulina. Tarkin said, don't let uh don't let my boss hear that it can be done in under an hour. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Yes, like I said, Paulina has done has done like 50, 60 apps and she specializes in front end. So many of us, it would take us much longer to do that, right? And vice versa, because again, every you know, every type of developer has strengths in different areas. You know, I know for me, my area is not front end. Um, so yeah, perfect. All right. So let's give another three seconds for the poll and quiz here. I saw we have a bunch of questions. Um, so we're gonna get to these in a second. So uh, yeah, please think about the questions if you haven't already. And let's take a look at these poll results. Ooh, I am so happy to see strong support as the highest number. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, and I, I'd be curious, you know, for those of you who uh, who said strong support, especially if you have strong support, but you guys haven't, uh, you know, taken the leap yet, like haven't actually implemented features, um, I'd love to hear why that is. Like, what are some of the hurdles that you faced uh, or you know, some of the challenges that you're overcoming? Because maybe we can talk about those. Yeah. And I see in the comment too, um, someone wrote, management does not see the possible return or investment. So that was one of the things you and I were talking about as well. Yeah. And that's something that we can help with too. You know, again, like, you know, it's depending on like the the mindset of you know of management and where they're coming from you know what their demographic is they might view games and gamification you know as a, a completely different thing right you know mm -hmm. so demographic makes a big difference uh, when it comes to adoption you know we see a lot of uh, a lot of younger companies like startups you know will easily adopt these principles and practices because they have grew up with it. They knew, you know, and they know uh, the benefits, right? But, you know, other people who have not, you know, they might not have, uh, have be convinced yet, right? And then we need to do a good job of convincing them. So, awesome. Okay. Well, then I think that looks perfect. So, that was our presentation about gamification. Uh, we have a couple questions. We're going to uh, you know, take these in a second here. Uh, so if you haven't posted a question yet, please do. And we're going to run through them. Uh, in the meantime, while you're thinking about your questions, uh, I do want to say that we do have, we're going to post uh, this presentation as well as some additional resources on the Mobile Academy. Just go to openforge.io uh, and you'll see it, Mobile Academy. We try to post how-to guides about different things in the mobile app industry. All right, again, mobile, uh, OpenForge is all about mobile applications. That's what we do for a living. Uh, and we know a lot in the field, all different industries. So we're happy to share that knowledge with you. And that's the purpose of the Mobile Academy. Uh, mobile apps are our specialty. We're always here. If you want to contact us or contact the team, uh, openforge.io uh, slash contact. And with that said, thank you all very much. So let's jump into the questions. And let's see. Uh, Mike, do you want us to start anywhere in particular or Mike Square? Yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll read a couple off uh, for you that came in during the presentation. Uh, Brent asks, uh, what kind of tools are you currently using to track the success or lack thereof of uh, your gamification features and strategies? Ooh. That's a good question. So there's there's a couple of different like tools. Um, you know, it, it, again, there's not necessarily a tool specifically for tracking success of gamification. But there are strategies you can use to track the success of the gamification um, you know, components from existing marketing tools or feed customer feedback tools. So, um, you know, we use I know we've used Instabug a lot in the past. Uh, that's a really good tool for like, you know, in-app feedback. 
um, and really just gauging what the user's doing. Uh, there's also um, App Annie we've used. Uh, that one you know, present, uh, presents a lot of data about just like the market uh, around your application. Um, and then, you know, you can even use something as simple as uh, Google Analytics, right? which we use quite often for many of our companies. Uh, so, you know, it's it's really the, the success is going to be measured by, you know, hitting the goals, the business goals that you guys set. Um, one thing I will recommend, though, when you're if you want to prove success, uh, especially to your executive team or to your stakeholders, you must release the gamification features as standalone updates right that way it's a true test right it's like a scientific test you know if you change too many things if you do a major release plus gamification then how do you know you know what the gamification aspects contributed so just make sure to have a dedicated release for that thank you great answer uh aaron hart points out uh gamification could potentially increase cost in terms of development and storage is there any hard data uh to show the roi is worth that investment oh well i guess sales would be the 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 hard data um well, i don't think i've seen I, I haven't seen a substantial increase in cost uh from just like the the data you're tracking because mm. you know because like like for instance, you know, if you use Google Analytics, you're already tracking a lot of these data points anyway. Um, and there's there's ways that you can you know set up your uh, like you know what you're tracking and, and how you're tracking it. I think to minimize costs both on the development side and on the hosting side. Um, you know, I'd have to know more about the situation, but uh, I'm happy to talk over it uh, further, Aaron. I don't know, Pauline, if you have anything else on that one. Yeah, I think it depends on the use case. And like, I know, um, I think the question was specifically around, like, as an example, to com users competing against each other. And I could see, like, depending on, like, what they're competing for, the, the data that's involved in could be that way. But again, it really depends on a case-by-case -case basis. Gamification, like, there are gamification elements that, frankly, don't have anything to do with backend or um, or uh, any database. So um, it, it, I agree with your answer. And it's a case by case basis. Yeah, good question. Oh, you're on mute, Mike. Yes, thank you, Jedi. Uh, I think we do have time for one more question and then we'll have to wrap up. Uh, we had a question came in from an anonymous attendee. Uh, what advice or perspectives do you have regarding user market research upstream of prototyping? And how far uh, how far down the process can we get uh, before we begin uh, diving into the code? And it looks like an anonymous attendee couldn't edit their um, question. So they just posted a follow-up, like a clarification one. Thank you, great. Uh, specifically, the research around knowing what gamification strategies and approaches uh, might resonate with the users. So, for the for the prototyping one, the prototyping question is that the one we're answering? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, they were just together, just. Oh, separate. okay. <laughs> um, well, so in terms of uh, prototyping. Uh, you know, I, I know like whenever we're doing a new application, especially if we work with a startup, we always recommend to them to not build a single thing, like don't build any code and always do a clickable prototype through either Figma or Marvel uh, or, you know, proto.io, like one of these different prototyping tools. Um, so I'm a big proponent of making sure that you don't spend any money or build anything code wise until you get some user feedback. Uh, and you can do that with these prototyping tools. Now it will be it'll be like fake, you know, in terms of it's not going to actually be live or functional, but it allows you to test out the concept, allows you to test out, you know, how you're presenting the application. Does it make sense to the user? Uh, and you get a lot of good data before you start building, which is going to save you a ton of time and a ton of money, especially in the iteration cycle. Absolutely. Great point, Jedi. Um, I want to thank Paulina and Jedi, our presenters today, for joining us and sharing this very interesting topic, how to make our apps sticky and resonate with our users, something that every developer is interested in. Yeah, thank you both for, for this awesome presentation. Um, glad to see everyone has in, uh, has been enjoying it. The chat has been incredible. Um, mm -hmm. Before we wrap up, we're going to be giving the recording out uh, afterwards. So if you miss something again, you will get a copy of the recording. Uh, and for folks who had to bounce early, they'll, they'll get a surprise recording 
of the webinar. So uh, everyone should be able to get access to this and watch it. So, and if we okay. didn't get, get to your questions, I, I saw you posted the uh, link to Discord, Mike, and then also feel free to, to email us. Um, my email is Jedi at openforge.io. Paulina is Paulina at openforge.io. Um, you know, we're also on Twitter as well. And so, you know, yeah, you guys can find us, I'm sure. Yeah, or just bug us on Discord. I'm on Discord quite frequently. So, <laughs> I, I have a awesome. record with Mike uh, for, you know, longest response time. You know, I typically take a month per response. <laughs> it explains why you haven't answered my question. Oh, crap. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tease it. Thank you so much, everybody. Hope you all have a wonderful uh, rest of your day. Thank, Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. See, See you, everyone. Bye.